Good afternoon and hope you're well and welcome to the late one with you as true the silver in city um ladies and gentlemen welcome welcome it's the 23rd of april the year is going very fast but guess what there's nothing we can do still but all we got to do is just what they say tan our yard right that's the most important thing what they say tan our yard and uh as you know it's uh we're in this period of this whole pandemic and uh i believe that very much to keep people abreast of what is happening from my perspective but also to bring in quality quality guests at the same time to talk about it and i've got dr um david burton um dr burton who is uh as i come before a gmc registered consultant ophthalmologist working in the nhs and of course he's been on a couple of times and what we're going to do today we're going to be talking more about covid looking at different aspects of it what i like for you to do as well is to most importantly is if you've got any questions really ask the questions if we don't answer the questions we'll answer the questions after or david will answer the questions after and um but in the meantime if you want to be interactive that's all great so david welcome again thank you so much for joining us david Oh, David has frozen. If David has frozen, David, are you there? David, come in, David. One, two, three. One, two, three. David. David. Okay, let me just do something. If David has frozen, David, are you there? David. Okay. Come in, David. One, two, three. Okay, I'll just wait for David to come in as much as possible. There has been, so he's gonna come back in. There's been some new developments over this week whereby, and you must have heard where, where today there's going to be um, testing. Well, not testing, but vaccine is going to be uh, uh, put out there um, where the government is saying they are gonna to start to use vaccine on humans, okay? There's also the aspect of more testing as well for persons um you're gonna have uh the frontline staff you're gonna have as well the uh uh essential services and i believe one of the questions they're going to qualify that a bit more they're going to be talking about testing as well on i'm going to say for covid you what can i say which we can even have testing on the persons like um supermarket staff what are supermarket staff what about you think about that for a second uh in in jamaica what what is happening there we're realizing whereby there's a increase of covid 19 tests which have been done and of those tests which have been done i believe the figure is now at 252 right now what i'm going to do i might pause for a second and maybe even have to come back because i want to make sure that david is okay maybe there's a technical difficulty so if anything uh let me just give him a little more chance to come on and if not, what I will do is to come back. So, ladies and gentlemen, is the most important part of this show is David Byrne. He's got to be on. So, what I'm going to do is just, uh, okay, I think I'm seeing him coming on. Ah, yes, he's coming on. Okay, David, are you coming on? Okay. All right. So, he's coming on back there. Just a technical hitch. How was your day? Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, how's your day? How, how are you doing the lockdown? I actually took a walk around the park, well, with my children, um, just four of us and my wife. And uh, a person said to me, a person said to me, what they said to me is, um, where is the mask? And I'm saying, hang on a second, where is the mask? Now, if I'm walking alone or with three persons and, and where's the mask and just a family in a quiet street, then the question you got to ask is, let me see, see if I can get David. David, are you there? I am. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in a ghost mode, it looks like. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't well, do very much for that. Well, we, we have David in ghost mode infrared. I think I may have to put on my infrared as well because, um, you know, we try to create it in a in a different style. David, I'll just, I'll just wait for you while you, while you sort out the magic. Okay, you're right. you're, you're right. a technical guy. You actually deal with this thing. Um, you deal with technicalities in... Um, at home. No. no, so still not. 
let me just let me just do something. I think we're getting there. I'll just hide it for a second there. Yes, yeah, so while yes, yeah, so while they ah uh, well well yeah yeah let me see yeah yeah okay there we are okay are you there yeah i'm here <laughs> no man we, we're good we're good the most important thing now is your voice <laughs> okay. fine as long as you can hear me that's fine i think yeah yeah no no problem david well listen david as I, you already know we discussed already what we're going to talk about we have had you on twice now and you give us an update around this time as to what's the latest which is happening in um with, regarding covid and yeah. developments with the government as well. What, what What is the latest from your perspective now? Yeah, so, I mean, wrapping up sort of the week, um, I mean, from, from today's explosive kind of um, information from the government, it's, it, we've got a lot of information in regards to um, testing. So testing is a big, big thing here. So yeah. we've got a clarification from the government, at least, that now we're going to be testing um, 100,000 people. Um, and we're working up towards those tests quite nicely. Yes. Um, now, in regards to that clarification, we were aware that there are 100,000 tests um, postulated, so the capacity, but it's actually the number of tests that are going to be undertaken. And and falling in line yes. with that, the, it's, it's an opening up of um, the testing to key workers. So essentially, yes. broadening up the pool from just healthcare workers uh, and care workers on the front line to those people who are key, listed as key workers. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that they will get better clarification on that tomorrow. But that's a, yeah. a good step in, in the right direction. And the other thing in regards to the tests is that that op also opens up the window for targeted testing. And this is something that I've, I've and I think a lot of clinicians have, have, have championed at the bit for in terms of trying to isolate those persons um, who not only have the disease, but potentially a likelihood are high risk of spreading the disease as well. So, yeah. so targeting those groups and shutting that down and isolating that as quickly as and efficiently as possible. So there are 18,000 people or 18,000 workers who um, will be responsible for, for, for contact tracing. Um, so that's the other big bit of news that, that's been delivered, delivered today, really. Um, mm -hmm. And so going forward, I would hope that that would help to reduce the infection rates because that's what we're trying to do, trying to reduce those infection rates effectively. Um, uh, um, and, 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 and obviously put this, hopefully put this to bed to a greater effect. But but in, in light of what you said, we, we talk about NHS, yes? Yes. Care workers, essential, we're talking maybe like the police mm -hmm. and also key workers. But so far, myself and the average bloke who may start to cough or whatever, we mm -hmm. can't, we are not being encouraged to be tested, isn't it? No, we're not. Um, so, um, so we're not being encouraged to be tested at all. Um, but I think the thing here is that um, uh, we we need to try and identify those people who have got symptoms of the disease itself. That's the that's yeah. the key key and effective thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now, in 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 regards to that same way. Um, we, we spoke about those key persons there. We talk about the police. And I was and in regarding the essence, what about those persons that works in the supermarket? Because they have been doing a fantastic work, David. Yeah, fantastic. and, and the they, yes. they've got to be really tested um in, in essence. And I think what what you'll find is that um when there's a requirement for those tests and certain stipulations that'll have to be met. Um, going from our particular group, whenever there's been an instance of somebody in the household having um, uh, evidence of the symptoms, then they've been eligible to have tests. So health workers on the front line, if if one of their family relatives had symptoms, then they, those persons would be tested um, for the disease. So um, I think that will be extended to people who are police, people who work in supermarkets. Um, those essential key workers will will have that facility as well. Um, yeah. So going forward, that's that's way that's the way that things will work. Whether this will be rolled out to uh, asymptomatic individuals. Is something that I think will would probably be manifest further down the line, not particularly now. Um, um, and but I think we'll get more information about that in due course as well. Why, why, why are we talking about the test bit there? Um, ladies, I'm going to come to a point regarding Jamaica to link this, but I just want to, mm. to welcome person, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the late one and uh, with 
Dr. David Burton, uh, Mr. Burton, Mr. Burton, who is a GMC registered consultant, ophthalmologic surgeon, working in NHS, and he has joined me for the third time now as we look at this whole issue. Please share this video if you are if you're watching. Please share it now, and if you're on YouTube as well, please kind of share it. And of course, if you got any uh, questions as well, uh, I would appreciate as well that you send. David, in in Jamaica, I don't know if you know, but there is a there's an issue which is happening in Jamaica whereby. The, the figures jumped recently, jumped mm. because of a particular business place, they call it um, BPO, they deal a lot with uh, uh, their, uh, what do you call it, um, call centre. Yeah. And some of my colleagues here, so half of our 250 cases here in Jamaica are from the BPO in St. Catherine, 131 cases, unfortunately. Mm. Our cases will increase as testing increases, plus community spread. Mm. Now, Break that down and compare that with Jamaica. None of us are being tested. And the 250 persons which has been tested in Jamaica, that is just what is tested, isn't it? Yeah, so that's the thing with, with the whole um, the idea of testing. You're going to have patients who don't present to a clinician or a health service um, for testing for, an ex for, for a multiple number of reasons. And in fact, just taking this back a step, we're also finding that people who don't have um, COVID in itself um, are not presenting to hospitals with other complications of, of other problems. So, for example, somebody with chest pain and has a heart attack may not present to the hospital because they're worried about catching COVID or for other speculative reasons. So, yes, with 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 the with a figure of two fifty two, that may well be just that's just related to the number of people who have been tested and found to be positive. There there is going to be a proportion of people who um, are out there who have not presented and will have symptoms of COVID and be, and obviously have COVID itself, but will never, well, potentially never realise that, um, that, that that particular symptom. So so the real figure could be much more? It could be much more. It could be, and I, I, it could be, I, I, I doubt heavily that the figure is 252, heavily. Yeah. That's across the board. We know that. We're in the reporting, um, um, the, 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 true, the true numbers here. Um, yeah. But... At the same time, we need to get a realization because the numbers matter cor quite correctly, but it's it's yeah. in tandem with other things um, that, that that really matter. Again, the contact tracing does really matter, especially when you're at the start of 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 this. If you can capture the data quite quickly, you can you can get low numbers. And I think New Zealand has been a really good marker of that. Um, they've got really low numbers of, of of patients who have presented to hospitals who have passed away um, because of their diligent work with regards to contact tracing and 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 make basically locking things down uh, quite effectively um okay any more point in regards to um um that particular area regarding testing i think that has been covered or I, I, I think i think that's i think that's the, the the summary basically is we're testing more we've got more capacity should be effectively testing more people as well not just capacity and it's being rolled out to more people and i think further down the track we'll get will get um, more people tested as well. The general population will will enter that that, that equation um, very shortly, I would hope. Right. So the next thing now is, um, the, and this is the latest one, and this is a mind-blowing one, uh, which I discussed a bit last night, and which the government, um, Matt Hancock, uh, mentioned and announced. It's about the UK have now a vaccine starting to test today. Yes. So trial started today. Um, first volunteer signed up. Um, and essentially the vaccine is one of the um, get out of jail cards that we have in our in our in our in our pocket um, okay. so vaccines is always um, not always but it's, it's recently become a hot topic amongst amongst mm -hmm. persons covid aside um, and I've, I've I think I've said this before to you on this platform that essentially my feeling on the matter as long as a vaccine is proved to be safe and effective, both of those two um, key components met, then I think that's a, a, a way forward and out of this particular current predicament. But also, yeah. we have to realise that that's going to going to take uh, a quite a bit of time to come to fruition. Well, this is this is a big test, and this is a, this is a question which many people are actually saying. They're saying, "May not take no vaccine," or "I'm not taking any vaccine." And the question now is, who? will the government or the doctors be given this vaccine to because it's in its embryonic stage sure. whereby it's a test. Sure. Now, what, what is the criteria? What is the prerequisite for someone so, 
So yeah, let, let's talk about the two things. So in terms of the test itself, in terms of developing that test, it's, it's broadly speaking going to be given to healthy individuals who have not shown symptoms of, of COVID. That's generally who you're going to be giving this to because you want to see the effect of the drug itself. Um, what age specific criteria that the, 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 the requirements, then that's that's up to the testing um, um, the, the testing powers of B to, to sort of give rise to that uh, the answer. So, but I know that volunteers have signed up, um, and the first person that I um, saw was was quite a young individual. So they'll have repetitive tests throughout the course of this, um, yeah. and it must be said that it's not with a live vaccine that we're, we're testing. Um, um, we're, we're using um, technology to constitute or reconstitute the the, the, the the virus itself, the parts of it. But that that's by the side. We're, we're, that's the testing taken care of, and we'll get continued data in regards to the safety and the effectivity of the medication. In regards I'll, to who the... Oh, sorry, I'll, keep talking. I'll keep talking, sorry. No, I was going to say, in regards to who we're going to give this medication to, mm. I would surmise that it would be those people who would be most at risk of developing the condition, but also quite possibly those people who would, um, when I say most at risk, I'm, I'm, I'm potentially looking at people who have underlying health problems potentially going on and having this particular vaccine if it's been proved to be face, uh, safe and effective, but also maybe people who are putting themselves on the front line as well. So caregivers, care workers, potentially the, you know, the key workers that we've listed, um, and then potentially roll that to, the, to, to, to others. However, again, that's my speculative thought on the matter. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's down for um, um, people in public health and the government are like to decide where this vaccine goes first of all. We're going to have quite short numbers. This isn't going to be something that's you know going to be pre-populated with with millions ready to go. I would suspect. So um, there will be defined criteria as to who will get the, the virus, the, the vaccine first. That, that's that's very interesting. I was of the, the preconceived notion that the, t the key person that would be used on this is someone maybe in a, a life and death situation where they say, listen coronavirus is killing off people you know what i'm saying so therefore we've got this virus and if you use it it could be the same or it could leave it to the same as was before so, so that that's the that's the um the second point of the discussion so uh, mm -hmm. i think what you're saying there and correct me if i'm wrong somebody who potentially has coronavirus and yes. you're looking to use a vaccine so no the, the second part of this equation is this vaccine is really for people who do not have any symptoms really? um of that's covid it's, it's to try and, I mean, you may well have had COVID previously and recovered from it, but it's not an, it's not an effective acute treatment. And what I mean by acute is somebody has the symptoms and say, okay, we're going to give you this treatment because um, the vaccine itself is trying to protect you against further um, instances of, of, of the disease itself. Okay. Yeah. So it's to try and reduce the chance that you pick up this infection further down the line and that it doesn't have such a great effect on you uh, yeah. further down the line. Now, in terms of acute treatments, you mentioned it's a very good point that you make there because it's a two-pronged attack. A two-pronged attack here is a vaccine to protect you further down the line and also to look at those people who actually have the infection itself and how do we try and target and treat that more effectively right. um, such that they don't have such a, uh, or potentially don't have such a, a disastrous course or, or, of, of their disease. So there's a two-pronged attack and there are, there are definite um, advancements in trying to look at uh, things that we've used historically for other conditions, uh, yes. but also um, new novel ways of treating this particular condition um, when patients arrive either in the hospital or have symptoms um, that would that would that may well develop into requiring an admission to hospital. So um, that, it's a very good point that you raise there. The vaccination isn't a treatment um, essentially; it's to protect you from having the condition further down the line right. because your, your body doesn't m mount the same response as it would do had you not had the, v the vaccine in the same instance. And it's the response to the, the trigger, and the trigger here being COVID-19, that causes the sequential um, development of issues, um, whether that's mild to moderate symptoms or severe symptoms that would bring you into a hospital and so on and so forth. That's very interesting, interesting that you clear that up, of course. I mean, it makes so much sense and logical sense. Now, now I was reading something earlier by a post by... Dr. Joe Aldred, and uh, he says, I'm curious, for those telling people not to get the COVID-19 vaccination, even when it becomes available, well, there are already many vaccines in existence, are people to refuse them to 
and what should people do about vaccines which is already had and he lists cholera dengue hepatitis a b e influenza malaria and and the list goes on so sure. so so of course and as, as you rightly say all of those are preventative isn't it they are and you know the eradication of some of these um diseases are for me as a as a clinician textbook um in the sense that i've never seen them but i know they've historically been treated and treated yeah. effectively because of the use of vaccinations so i you know i think uh, part of there's lots of different pe lots of different rush reasons for for people's reservation as to having um vaccinations and a lot of those reasons have been um, sort of squashed and 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 and, and evidence to support the mm -hmm. fact that vaccinations are safe. Things like measles, mumps, and rubella, those the uptake for those vaccinations were historically high. And then you know we found there was um, particular stories that were circulating to say that there was links with autism, which have never been proved um, um, in, in 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 scientific literature at all. And but has raised the concern level for for parents, uh, admittedly, you know. Um, for for them to have reservations about using um the, that that particular vaccine uh the, the issue is that the numbers of uh and rates of measles and rubella has escalated because of the fact that people have decided not to um, have their children have that particular modality of treatment mm -hmm. so my feeling is on, on on safe and again it keeps coming down to the fact safe and effective vaccinations mm -hmm. i'd have no hesitation on using at all um, and I have done so for I have myself and I have with family. So uh, I, I stand by that and I will always stand by that um, as long as they're safe and effective. And it, 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 that's that's the key here, um, because it will um, reduce the chance that this particular COVID um, situation and going down the line future um, yeah. uh, potential pand pandemics will be treated with vaccination. And that's the way that we we've treated historic um, um, plagues that have, have, have taken lives um, in the past um, and caused significant, we um, um, call it morbidity, so significant health effects. Yes. Um, that they've they've now been eradicated. Um, so we, we need to really face up to that challenge as well outside of this COVID challenge. But in regards to vaccinations, um, I, okay. I would stress that it's something we should take. Okay, okay. And before we move on then, um, there's one point I just wanted to, which has been bursting in my head, is that that person now was being test was 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 got the the vaccine mm -hmm. for COVID nineteen. How will you know? Are you going to put them in a COVID ward? So, in terms of the the sorry, going back yeah. to make make the example again for me, because you, are you talking about somebody who's had the vaccination? No, are no, they on the COVID no, ward? No, no, no. This, this is you said it will use unhealthy persons. Yes. Right. So therefore, the healthy person will have the vaccine now. Yes. How correct. will tests be done now? Are, right. are we Good question. That yeah. So no, that person board. goes, no, 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 no. That person <laughs> goes back into the, the real world, the real world here, because obviously this isn't a real world. We're in isolation. But they go back to what they would do normally, what what other people would do normally. I don't think they're going to have ac more access to go on the street and do things outside of what, what we're expected to do. But they yeah. will go back to the world normally and have regular tests regular mm -hmm. tests to see whether or not they've um, mounted an immune response, regular tests to see whether they prove positive to the condition itself, and so yeah. on and so forth. So that's, that's how the safety and effectivity of, the, of, of this particular vaccine will, will be tailored, and how frequent those tests will be, uh, for, again, for, for the testing committees to, to sort of uh, come to a conclusion on. But it'll be quite regular. Yeah. Okay, well, another point now, and, and this, is, this is on to the next one, Scotland and and there was this clickbait clickbait which grabbed me sure. and, and we laugh at each other a bit early. Sure. Lockdown lifting in Scotland uh, and then I look below it and it said like it to be phased. We'll touch on clickbait at the end of it, but in regards to to, to the whole lockdown now and the way mm -hmm. forward, uh, what's what where are we looking at now? I think we have extended it uh, lockdown for an period of three weeks. Uh, yeah, so we've got three weeks, um, so I think we're into week one of that next three week exposure. Um, so Chris Whitty has given us a little bit of an insight yesterday, um, kind of like towards the end of the proceedings, just in regards to where we where things where we will go. Yes. Um, there's a de hot debate at the moment going on in the House of Lords in regards to isolation of of individuals who um, are over a certain age, and and there's a 
there's a there's obviously a real worry that we may well be entering in a prolonged extended uh, isolation for for vulnerable people so that's been classed as potentially people with underlying health conditions but also the, the elderly um so that has ramifications in itself um but regards to how we get out of this it's going to obviously be a graded response certain things will open up before other things um so schools for example um i think have been postulated that will be opening up one of the first things to be opening up um so safest environments first and then we go back to um uh, what what is what does that look like so social isolation was was was, was talked about so, so when i say that what i mean is isolating yourself from a distance from people that will probably continue um yes. And then obviously the next uh, hot topic in regards to that um, is, you know, my uh, hold uh, dear to my heart is this PPE issue. Um, yes. So the recommendation at the moment from the government isn't that we all wear face masks. Um, you can speculate on why that is, but also I would say look at other countries and see what they're doing. And a, a, a type of face covering is probably a sensible thing for people to wear. Um, and um, that that's that's not going to particularly be uh, an arduous task for people to put to, to wear a, a type of face covering and i think that's probably a sensible yeah. thing to do so that's where we're looking at and in terms of scotland again it's, a, it's a, they were discussing a graded response a graded introduction of um of, of reintroduction to 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 a normality of life but not mm. back to where we were pre-covid anytime soon um and especially um in in england where it was uh, where chris Whitty was really talking about prolongation uh, at least for the, until the, the end of the year, really. Mm. And again, it comes back to the point that we need a vaccine to protect us long down, long further down the track, yes. um, uh, to, to, in order for us to again get to more of a near normal. Yeah, regarding regarding the medical circles and your network or whatever, and what mm. you guys over breakfast, coffee, or tea. Sure. What what is the pro proximity or the prognosis? How long you believe? That this lockdown will be based on how things are looking. That's that's such a tricky question yeah. to ask because it, it's not just a medical um, issue here at hand. It's an yeah. it's an economic impact. Yes, it's yes, an yes. educational impact for for kids. Um, there is so 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 many sort of um, this is such a mixed bag um, when it comes to making a decision, and that's why the complexity of this are, are beyond medicine. Um, we know that obviously from a medical standpoint, we have. Um, effectively um, squash the curve and flatten that out quite nicely. Um, we know that we have um, obviously had a number of patients who have recovered very well from COVID and been discharged from wards. Um, so as a medical fraternity, as a caregiver fraternity, I think we've done um, as, as best we can with this particular situation that we find ourselves in. Um, but it would be very difficult for me to speculate and say, well, actually, now that we're at period X, what, yes. what what is the the idea of opening up and we rely on other bits of information yes. so obviously from daily briefings you get information in regards to how many people are um ad, uh, adopting periods of isolation whether that be traveling less and, and so on and so forth how many businesses are closed to allow for p people to work at home all of those things so yes. the, i think it's a collection of evidence and, and we'll scrutinize the evidence obviously mm. wholly as a society um but it, yeah, it's difficult for me to say that you know, where 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 we are. Um, we know where where from from where I work, and obviously the data that we've got, where 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 we're over that peak or just at that peak. Um, yeah. I would expect numbers to fall, but not very quickly um, okay. as they've risen. Um, but I wouldn't expect you know people to 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 expect you know the next three weeks, for example, that we'll definitely be back. Um, I think there's going to be obviously a discussion, and we know that in the next few weeks. Okay, well, David, listen, I want to thank you so much for the update. Um, before we go, I've got a couple of questions here, which yeah. I just want to ask. And one of them from Anthony Francis, he said, should we be wearing face masks? And when do you think social distancing should end? And I'll add to Anthony, because he lives close to me, and I, 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 I saw him today. We, um, my children and my, my wife, we just took a walk around the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and just casually, you know, nobody's yeah. on the street. You know? And of course, I call him and say, hey, Anthony, um, say hi, and we just from a distance, you know. But yeah. the question is, somebody asked this question, Silver, where's your face mask? And I'm saying, <laughs> should I be wearing my face mask around the street just with my family? That means to say, if that's the case, I should be wearing face masks in my house. Well, tell us that, that, that dimension, what he said. Yeah, I mean, mask, yeah. listen, as I alluded to before, I don't think there's a, 
there's a there's a right or wrong here. Walking down the street, encountering nobody, quite obviously, uh, I don't think that's a risk. Okay, but at the same time, um, wearing a homemade face mask to cover your yourself is yeah. not a bad idea. Um, now, I have to make it clear: it, it, it's to really protect others in that in that respect, because you know, to to protect yourself, you're going to need to have um, something a bit more arduous, and that's obviously why when we're on the front line, we need yeah. the correct PPE. Um, uh, so um, I think, I, I don't think it's a particular issue. And if you look at the way that other countries have, have handled this whole face mask issue, um, some countries have elected to, to support the idea and made it uh, a point of concern that people should wear face masks. Yes. Um, and so I, I don't see it as a, as a particular issue. But again, just being sensible, if you're if you're walking down the street and you encounter nobody, then it's not. And you're, or if you do encounter somebody, you cross the road and you're not having any social contact, then yeah. a face mask in that scenario um, is 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 not really helpful. Yes, and in the second part, when you said social distancing should end, when yeah. when can we so, start? That, 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 yeah. I I don't think that's ending anytime soon. If wow. I'm being open and honest with you, I don't think it's ending anytime soon. And and that's the dilemma for the things that we want to get back. All of us want to get back to doing. You know. Um, attending church, attending football matches, attending concerts, those all those things. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how how we encounter uh, how we encounter that. I'm not saying we're, it's never going to end, but what I'm yeah. saying is, in the short term, um, and I'm talking the next two or three months here, I can't yeah. see that ending anytime soon. But again, that's speculative. That's me um, speak, speaking um, mm. without my medical hat on, but more just thinking about the logistics of of how we get back to a norm. Uh, or semi norm. I just don't see that ending um, anytime soon. And 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 finally, um, uh, uh, Pasho said, "I wonder whether your code of conduct and ethics permits you to advocate for all vaccines." <laughs> Empirical evidence research has found adverse correlation between the vaccines and autism. Yeah, so that's why it's deliberately talked about um, MMR mm -hmm. and its and the autism link. There's no no link at all, and I think yes. the the I think the other thing to mention here is, uh, as I said at the right at the top, these diseases have been put to bed. And if you looked at the diseases coming back, um, you know, there's got to be a, a, a reason discussion as to whether you want those diseases to come back if we decide electively yeah. not to have a vaccine around. And mm -hmm. those diseases were life changing diseases. Those diseases took lives. Um, yes. and, and so for, that's why I say um, with, with, with the, the best of intentions, there's no um, speculation in my mind. There's no there's no um, concern in my mind when it comes to the use of these tried and tested vaccines. There, there, there there's no link with autism um, that's been that's been that's been proven in scientific literature, um, and um, that that people may well be aware of. Um, a particular doctor, um, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, for example, who postulated there may well be a link, and that's been disproven multiple times. Um, yeah. And has, has has generated a lot of, of press and interest, but um, that, that's the, the scientific community has not ever um, proven his claims at all in the slightest. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. And uh, I'm going to get to get you going now. But one last bit now. When I yeah. saw the Scotland um, headline, oh, I yeah. jumped at it and I said, "Wow, Scotland is is that enough?" And then persons are saying, um, "Well, the UK has moved a bit slow because." New Zealand and all these places, the, U the UK, and, and I was saying, hang on a second. I mean, you cannot really, I don't know, but you cannot uh, judge each countries in the same way. Yeah, no way, no. Yeah, but, yeah. Go on, go on, yeah, yeah. No, so I, that's the thing. I think a lot of the um, the ways that, in regards to the, the Scotland issue, there was a there was a headline that you know they're they're coming out, they're doing, they're looking to get back out there and do things, and it was kind of a clickbaiting headline, and it was yeah, sort of, yeah. you know. Going down the line, whereby you really have to read the the the, the message behind the headline, and yes. I think that's a point proven pre-COVID, but mostly in COVID as well, because the effect of this has obviously affected uh, the, the the world through twice, three, four times over. So making sure you we all keep abreast of uh, of of literature. I mean, the other thing is, I know we've talked a good half an hour, forty minutes now about COVID, but I think limiting your time to COVID as well that's a that's a good thing. You know, yeah. an hour, an hour a day, an hour and a half, you know, in the literature, um, is is probably enough for you. 
um, because of the fact that there is so much information out there. You can get information overload, but also the fact that these headlines will draw you in and point you in a direction you think you're going. But actually, when you get to the nooks and crannies of the of the information, the the information actually points you to to something completely different. So just being careful is is key. Yeah. It's interesting what you said right there because I remember when things started in the UK, everybody the figures, the figures, and every morning you get up, it's gone up, it's gone up, people die. Yeah. And now what I'm seeing in Jamaica, for argument's sake, and and, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I I've got the agreement from Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Christopher Topton, to come on my show. Uh, we're trying to work out a date at this time because so many moving parts is happening down in Jamaica at this moment, and hopefully I should be adding the, the Jamaica High Commission next week Tuesday as well. Um, to talk about aspects of COVID impact upon Jamaicans here, the, the, the some persons who are from the boat who are supposed to go to Jamaica, some of them beside that. But in Jamaica, what I'm seeing now is every morning you're seeing these increase of the figures, mm. and I believe, I believe it is, it is at that point when we started where everybody started to worry because the news just kept going. It's thirty three, it's two fifty two. Yeah. You know, people panic now and, and and this is what is happening yeah 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 i think and and that's and that's a really tricky thing to try and and balance out because people will go through this in the in the in the manner that is reflective of of, of, yeah. of, of the nation so um we can watch speculatively from here and and say oh they look like they're going in the same trajectory but it may they may not and yes. i think um the lay of the land there is a lot different the the connectivity of people is a lot different um yeah. and i would hope that they will be able to learn through the experiences of other um, yes. countries, you know, yeah. in, in an effort to try and yes. um, dampen down the unfortunate effects that this this particular disease has had. So, um, God willing, that 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 yeah. will that will take place. And you, you mentioned a good point about the dynamics of the country because over here you got the underground train, which just that's it. Yeah. So you know, the population centres are a lot different. Um, the 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 country is a lot different. Um, yeah. uh, Obviously, people are just uh, are different as well. The movement of people is is, is different. Um, the reliance on on cars may well be different to that of public transport, um, mm. and so the network links are a lot different too. So, um, I think that's where targeting is going to be really key in in, in 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 Jamaica because if you can sh shut down a particular area very quickly and effectively, yes. you've saved um, not only people within that area because you can lock them down, but you've saved yes. the rest of the country as well. So. Um, we'll we'll just have to wait to see what uh, Mr. Tufton says um, on your yeah. on, on your broadcast um, in regards to the effort in Jamaica as well, and get a bit more of an update there. Good, good. Well, David, listen, I want to I want to get you to get your rest so you can get back on the front line. And I apologise. I don't know what happened with the. I think I'm breaking the internet today. This happened earlier for me as well. I was on a conference call and it just shut down. So uh, I apologise for the. Uh, I, I think I like the the thing. I'm going to try to see if I can do a infrared thing like <laughs> come out of Mars or something like that. I have really no funny. idea what I look like, so I can't see <laughs> what I look like at this moment in time. I'm going to obviously replay this later on, but um, I, I apologize for the network falling down. I'm using my phone right now um, as, a, as a backup of the backup. backup. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. so, uh, so, so hopefully that's, uh, that, you know, that, that's been fine and, and you've been able to hear me out there in the ether. So yeah, well, uh, yeah, thank you. You're very resourceful. And well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for Dr. Burton um, GMC registered consultant, ophthalmologic surgeon, working in the NHS, working several regions in the UK, inclusive of North Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Northwest, Midlands, and London. Has a keen interest in postgraduate medical education, come to bridge the gap by conducting health form with the, the black community, the, the, the black community. Is it the black black community? Black black black. Yeah, yeah, and of course, you know, there's there's a there's a, there's another side of him as well. His wife. Dr. Carla Campbell Burton, she's fire, trust me. She's an epidemiologist who works for a pharmaceutical consulting firm and previous work for the Center of Disease, um, background in public health, and is a fitness fanatic in her spare time. So, um, yeah, so they're on the front line. And today, of course, David, um, I, I do my duty. I, I, I applaud for the NHS and the essential services tonight. Thank you. Um, out there, and we do that every night duly. Tonight was really good because. A lot of more, I guess, because it was more sunny. A lot of neighbors came out, and I and, I, and the funny thing I said today, I wasn't going to take up my phone because I've been doing it every week. Yeah. As a neighborhood watch chair for my street, always capture these things, you know. Yeah. But I saw so many people came out um, today 
and and I, so I grabbed my wife phone and said, Let, "We need to capture more of this." <laughs> yeah, and I think it's it's a good degree of positivity. You no, know? I think yeah. in times like this, um, operating obviously a safe distance, which we got, which I'm sure we're all appreciating. Yes. Uh, I think any degree of positivity in 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 light of uh, you know quite serious situations is is always a good thing to applaud as well. So that's that's fantastic. Okay, good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. And on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Silver and TV, where this will be uploaded because not everybody's on uh, Facebook, of course. So it'll be uploaded on YouTube. Links on link, linked, uh, well, on LinkedIn as well, and on Instagram. And also like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Silver and TV. And as my daughter always say, touch the bell so you can find out what is happening as well. So without further ado, thank you very much and have a good night. David, all the best, buddy. Thank all you. Best. you too. Cheers. Bye-bye.